Neurons are special cells to transmit nerve impulses, but do you really know how they work? Do you really know how they transmit information to all places in our body? Neurons allow you to do everything that you can think of doing. Let's explore neuronal transmission. Neurons use energy and electricity working together to achieve transmission. Neurons divide into three main parts. The cell body, which holds their nucleus, the dendrites, where a neuron receives impulses from other neurons, and the axon, a ramification of the cell body, which allows the neuron to send its own impulses. The action potential, this is biosphere for neuronal transmission. But to first understand the action potential, we have to talk about ions, which have negatively or positively charged ions that have an equal amount of protons and electrons. These are found everywhere, from a grain of salt to the device in which you're watching me right now. Ions can be of all elements in the periodic table. Ions have a positive charge if they have less electrons than protons, and they have a negative charge if they have more electrons than protons. Opposite charges attract, so these ions will go wherever, wherever there is an opposite charge in order to bring these charges into balance. This phenomenon is referred to as the electrostatic force. Have you ever wanted to get the heck out of a crowded room? Ions feel that way too. They follow the concentration gradient, meaning that they go wherever there is less of their own kind. This kind of property is intended to keep an equilibrium of ions in both sides of a membrane. The neuron utilizes these, these properties through ionic channels, which are like doors that let ions in and out, to make transmission possible. A neuron can be either at rest or doing an action potential. When a neuron is at rest, it is simply not transmitting any information. It then is transferred outside, whatever is outside the bound to membrane, has high concentration of positive sodium ions, Na+, in its intracellular part, inside the bounds of its own membrane, there is a high concentration of positive potassium ions, K+. There are also negative chlorine ions, Cl-, and negative protein structures in the intracellular side. Moreover, the intracellular side is negative relative to the, to the extracellular side. This fact is described by negative 70 millivolts, a voltage that represents the ch change in charge between both the intracellular side and extracellular side and is referred in biospeak as the resting membrane potential. You can imagine that these ions want to go down their concentration gradient and passionately obey the electrostatic force. If this happens, the membrane potential, the resting membrane potential, is disrupted. The official guardian of the resting state, the sodium potassium pump, along with other passive channels, help maintain the resting potential by transporting two potassium ions inside the cell for every three sodium ions it transports out the cell. This is why the intracellular side of the membrane is negative to the extracellular side of the membrane in a resting neuron. Let's now talk about the action potential. The action potential is what we call by neuronal transmitting. A neuron sends an action potential to induce a response from yet another neuron which yet stimulates other neurons until reaching a desired destination, usually an organ. Action potentials depends on ions found both in the intracellular and extracellular side of the neuronal membrane to follow their concentration gradients and obey the electrostatic force. All of this can be possible through the opening of membrane-bound ionic channels. Voltage-gated ion channels VGACs are MVPs in the action potential and react to changes to membrane potential caused by external stimuli. Sodium VGACs are the first to open by the action of a stimulus, which causes sodium to rush into the cell. A strong enough stimulus will bring the resting memory potential of negative 70 millivolts, but a threshold value of around negative 55 millivolts, which is the voltage in which sodium VGACs is open. The sodium rushing in bringing the negative 70 millivolts resting potential to around 40 millivolts. The sodium VGAC is closed when the memory potential is too positive, but potassium VGAC is open at the same time due to this change in voltage. Potassium rushes out bringing the memory potential from 40 millivolts to bring below the resting memory potential, less than negative 70 millivolts. The sodium potassium pump helps bring back the ions back to their place to restore the resting potential. This depolarization, when the potential goes positive of the membrane and sudden repolarization, the potential is negative, and spread across the axon in a wave-like fashion. I invite you to explore more about neuroscience. Thank you.